you. It is midnight. I'm WHNT News 19 Chief Meteorologist Jason Simpson. I know a lot of you are getting rumbled out of the bed in northeast Alabama because of this big line of thunderstorms. It has calmed down considerably from what it was just about three hours ago when we had a tornado warning that was issued for Limestone County, then for Madison County, then for Lincoln County. Those are all over. Uh, if you were been waiting to go to bed, your power has been off and you just got uh, word back that uh, you, you're just getting your electricity back or your television service back. And from Huntsville West, we're all fine. In Scottsboro, in Guntersville, in Arab, in Cullman, in Bailenton, in Decatur, in Hartzell, we're all fine. There's still a thin sliver of northeast Alabama where there is a tornado watch in effect. And then uh, we look down here toward uh, Crossville and Kilpatrick where we've got a, a, a cluster of uh, lightning strikes. Anywhere we see that happen, we still may have some potential for a uh, strong wind gust. Uh, there's still a tornado watch in effect, so we've got our eyes on everything that's happening here. And if there's something you need to know about, we're going to break back right in here on WHNT News 19 and let you know what's happening, where it's going, when you can come out uh, of your safe place, and when you need to be there. So I can make that promise to you. We're going to stay here until this thing is totally gone. We'll be back unless there's a new warning issue that we need to let you know about instantly. And then we're going to be back at about 1230 with our next update. But you can follow us at WHNT.com. We've got this image streaming for the entire rest of the evening until this is over, and we'll break in and uh, occasionally step out here and uh, make some comments and tell you where things are going. Again, that's on WHNT.com. Just click on the live stream, and you'll be able to see exactly what we're seeing here in the office, even when we go back to programming, which we're going to do right now. Thanks for watching. It is 12.07. I'm Chief Meteorologist Jason Simpson. Uh, we have a new severe thunderstorm warning in effect for DeKalb County. And the primary reason that we wanted to uh, interrupt programming to show you this is because uh, there's a lot of lightning that has ramped up around Geraldine, and there are uh, some signs that this storm may be rotating. Uh, so I would suggest if you're in this part of DeKalb County uh, that you don't just let this pass by. You might want to go ahead and go to an interior area. Uh, this thing could turn into uh, something much more significant in a very short period of time. It is a severe thunderstorm warning for DeKalb County. Uh, it includes places like uh, Geraldine and Crossville and Dawson. Uh, it's already passed Kilpatrick. Uh, this is one more intense thunderstorm that's up on Sand Mountain. And you know what the history is like up here. Back out just a little bit and show the entire uh, region here that we're warning. First of all, you can see that little crook uh, that's formed within this line of storms. This is what uh, that we watch for. That's the reason there's a tornado watch in effect. So we've got this uh, heavy line of storms from Henniger to Sylvania uh, down toward Powell Crossroads. That's not the severe part. It's this area right here that's between Geraldine and Collinsville on Sand Mountain that there may be some rotation developing within that storm and it is moving northeast in the direction of Fort Payne and Pine Ridge uh, and it might even clip the southern edge of Fife and Shiloh and Rainsville. There's kind of a broad area that this thing could go. When it's part of a line, it tends to follow along the line and move to the east as well. That's why you have this broad, severe thunderstorm warning out there. It does include Lookout Mountain, Dogtown, Adamsburg, uh, Fort Payne proper, and the Fort Payne portion that's up on Lookout Mountain. It includes the southern edge of the Rainsville city limits. Uh, then you come down the mountain toward Pine Ridge. You're involved in it too. So severe thunderstorm warning. It would be a good idea to kind of move toward the middle of the house uh, from Dawson up to Maynard all the way to Pine Ridge right now and uh, you know go ahead it's it's okay to be better safe than sorry get the kids out of the bed and let them know that uh, it's, it's gonna be okay we're gonna go to our safe place uh, we're gonna go to the lowest part of the house an interior closet or bathroom or hallway, and uh, we're going to make sure that we're safe until this passes by. Uh, in fact, we're just going to kind of stay here with this until uh, we see that it either ramps up or it kind of goes away because there's just something about a look like that that kind of leaves us uneasy. And since it's 10 after 12, uh, we're already very early into Friday morning. I think it's just best if we just kind of stay here with it. So, Brandon, make sure your mic is up, and let's just kind of talk back and forth about this. Again, we're also streaming on WHNT.com.
Uh, and the reason we're here is because we think that this might end up being a little bit stronger than just a severe thunderstorm in DeKalb County. Uh, the instability factor here is not quite as high as it was to the west, uh, but there is still a lot of shear in the atmosphere. And uh, we've seen the lightning output kind of go down. There's one area of circulation. There's another area of circulation. So within this severe thunderstorm band that's coming through Fife and through Dawson and through Collinsville and moving into Fort Payne, there may be some rotation uh, that could potentially produce a small spin up tornado. So it's something that we're just going to kind of hang here with you for a few minutes. And uh, if the weather service doesn't issue that warning, uh, then we'll send you back to programming. But I'd just rather, since we are here in the middle of the night and um, most of you are, 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 are were awakened by the weather radio anyway, uh, we just kind of want to let you know what's happening. Uh, so, uh, so Brandon, I'm going to toss it over to you for just a moment and uh, let you kind of do a little radar analysis and tell us uh, what you see. You spotted this thing first. Yeah, uh, very good. Uh, yeah, again, no severe, th no tornado warning, just a severe thunderstorm warning from the National Weather Service at the current time. But uh, again, due to the fact that it's after midnight, uh, a lot of folks have gone to bed already. And by the way, if you are watching us and you're not maybe in DeKalb County, you're uh, out, out of the area and you know someone in DeKalb County around Collinsville, Crossville, West of the interstate, uh, you might want to give them a call or a text, uh, shoot them some kind of message to wake them up just so they're at least on guard. Again, we don't have an active tornado warning uh, going on, but we do have several areas of uh, concern as far as wind shear, some possible rotation. Uh, we're still a little bit, we're fairly close to the radar, so we're getting a pretty good look, but the one thing we don't, we have is a lot of rain around, uh, which is also going to uh, possibly uh, mask whatever circulation there might be as far as a tornado touching down. So uh, this is one of those dangerous situations, potentially dangerous situations that we just don't want to let uh, sneak up on you. Uh, even the latest sweep of the high top radar, that's the closest and the best vantage point right now. And still some uh, shear within this, maybe not quite as tight as it was uh, about 10 minutes ago, but there is still some uh, concern for some shear. Maybe the wind shear is not quite high enough to issue a tornado warning at the current time as far as the thresholds go uh, for issuing a Doppler radar indicated tornado warning. But there's still enough concern that there's going to be some strong straight line winds within this. A severe thunderstorm warning does continue and it runs from basically uh, western DeKalb County through Fort Payne into northeastern DeKalb County for this entire area you can see highlighted in this yellow box which kind of gets obscured a little bit by the radar data but I'll kind of outline it for you. Uh, taking off the, uh, the radar, the velocity scope, you can see how embedded within this uh, heavy rain the circulation is. So there's going to be a lot of lightning, very gusty winds. The, the rain is going to be torrential. Uh, with All right, thank you Brandon. And uh, looking uh, through reports on Twitter so far, so good. There have been no reports of damage. Uh, there are some power outages here and there, uh, but for the most part, this this thing hopefully is not on the ground. And uh, if, if we've got anything there, maybe we've just got wind gusts that are around 40 or 50 miles per hour. That is a lot of wind coming across Interstate 59, moving up on Lookout, coming across Sand Mountain. The lightning output has decreased, and I'll tell you what we're going to do here. Uh, since the Weather Service has not issued a tornado warning with this, uh, unless, unless they do issue that here in just a few moments, which it doesn't doesn't seem like they're going to. Uh, what we'll do is if we see this lightning output go down here within the next two or three minutes and the rotations don't seem to be there quite as strongly, uh, then we're going to let you go back to regular programming. And you see there's this this waviness to the line. Uh, that's where we still may have some potential for uh, more significant weather uh, than in some of the areas that uh, that are just outside of this. So again, let's back out. It's pouring down rain in a lot of parts of the Tennessee Valley right now. It's 1221. We're going to come back in about 10 minutes and give you another update on this storm unless a, uh, an additional warning is issued uh, that, that, that you need to know about. Uh, since there's been no damage reported and since uh, the signature doesn't seem to be changing that much, uh, we're going to let that uh, kind of go back to programming and We'll still be streaming on WHNT.com. It is 1230. I am Chief Meteorologist Jason Simpson. Strong storm still pulling through DeKalb County. It's over in Henniger, Sylvania, Rainsville, Fife. Uh, we still have this uh, interesting looking part of the storm that's close to Fort Payne that's coming up on the mountain right now. That is showing signs of rotation. We have not heard a single report of damage from this, though, from DeKalb County. And usually if there is something going on, we hear about it pretty quick because we've got good Sheriff's Department, good EMA, good communication there. Uh, so with that in mind, there's a lot of lightning and thunder here close to Blake. 
Lake and Fort Payne. It's moving east up onto Lookout Mountain close to Lake Howard, Fisher Crossroads. It'll probably stay just a touch south of Valley Head and Mentone, uh, but the wind up on Lookout Mountain may gust over 50 miles per hour with this. It could gust as high as 60 or maybe even 65, and we'll continue watching this. It's a suspicious looking storm, but the National Weather Service sticking with a severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, we will probably only have one more update for you. That'll come at 1 o'clock because all this will finally be out of North Alabama by about 1 a.m. We'll be back in about a half hour uh, with one more update for you on the weather situation. And we are live once again. A tornado warning has just been issued for DeKalb County. Uh, this is for the eastern part of the county, and this is what we've been watching and why we were on air for the last half hour while there was a severe thunderstorm warning in progress. A possible tornado on the north side of Fort Payne uh, moving up toward Lake Howard, toward Valley Head. Uh, this is going to stay north of Highway 35. The possible tornado is north of Highway 35 right now, so uh, you need to be in a safe place immediately in the north end of Fort Payne. Uh, close to Isbell Field Airport, close to uh, the Country Club, uh, Hammondville, Valleyhead, Mentone, Lake Howard, Fisher Crossroads. This tight circulation is quickly moving toward the Georgia border. This warning will not be in effect very long because it's going to be out of DeKalb County very quickly. Uh, we just got a report a few moments ago of uh, some storm damage close to Crossville. There was at least a 60 mile per hour wind gust uh, at the intersection of 227 and Highway 68. Now that was downwind of where this storm was at the time, uh, but the tornado warning is still in effect for DeKalb County. It let me tell you who it doesn't impact. If you are south of downtown Fort Payne, if you're in Henniger or Eider or Rainsville or Fife or Shiloh, any of the communities on Highway 75, it's nowhere near you. This is a lookout mountain storm at this point. If you're on sand or in the Wills Valley south of Fort Payne, you're fine. If you're in the Wills Valley or northeast of Fort Payne on Lookout Mountain, that's where this possible tornado will be. And I'll go ahead and tell you this, if you're watching us in uh, places like Broomtown in northern Cherokee County, uh, it's going to come pretty close to you too. So we've got this circulation that has really intensified in just the past few minutes north of Fort Payne. Uh, it's just to the northeast of uh, Fort Payne High School. It's up on the mountain past Fort Payne High and past Wills Valley Elementary School. Uh, so if you're in Fort Payne, it's already over. Uh, if you have some uh, damage that, uh, that has happened at your house, uh, let us know about it. Uh, tweet it to us at Valley WX. Uh, or uh, tweet it to us with the hashtag ValleyWX. I'm at SimpsonWHNT on Twitter. Uh, and again, we are uh, in live coverage for a tornado warning in DeKalb County. Uh, that warning goes until 1.15 a.m., but it will likely be a little bit uh, before 1.15 when this is canceled. Uh, so there's our circulation. It's right over the Lake Howard community now. It's moving east quickly toward the Georgia border and toward the northern edge of Cherokee County. Uh, if you are uh, again, in Fort Payne, if you're in uh, places like Rainsville, this is not a warning for you. This is solid into the eastern edge of Jackson County, and it's right in the perfect spot where you would expect it to develop, right there where the instability and the shear are maximized. That's happening on top of Lookout Mountain tonight. Uh, in fact, pull that scope away, and let's just kind of look at this. It's not a classic tornado structure. This is a line of thunderstorms uh, that has a lot of wind in it, and it may have a small tornado somewhere in this general area. Now, the radar doesn't see the tornado itself. It sees the environment and the storm that's surrounding it. Uh, so we have the general idea that this broad area uh, is the spot where a tornado may be developing or may have already developed and uh, put down and done a little damage. Uh, so with the fact that we've had so much wind tonight, uh, that we have been on the air for several hours now, on again, off again. Uh, but if you are up here on Lookout Mountain, Fisher Crossroads, Lake Howard, Valley Head, you have got to go ahead and take shelter right now because this thing is coming and it's coming fast. Uh, we'll get the next update from the radar here in just a moment, but as Brandon plots on some of the highways there, uh, Alabama 117 east of Valley Head, County Highway 137. If you live on any of those roads, there is an imminent threat of a tornado or at least wind gusts that could exceed 70 miles per hour right here on Lookout Mountain, and there comes the sweep around. Uh, let's take the scope off so we can see the, the, the way that the storm actually looks based on the reflectivity uh, and uh, it's it is rapidly moving east. We've got this bow echo uh, that is now from Valley Head 
east of Lake Howard down to the Cherokee County line. There's has had a history, recent history, of producing a little damage in southwestern DeKalb County near Crossville as it moved to the northeast. We've been watching the circulation uh, for the past uh, 30 minutes or so now. And the good news is it does look like it's starting to loosen up a little bit. Still, All right, thank you, Brandon. Uh, we do know that there are a lot of power outages around DeKalb County, getting some of the reports on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, there are some places where there are the, the power is on and it hasn't even flickered, and then there are other spots where it's been out for uh, 10, 15 minutes, in some cases a half hour or more. But by far the worst damage happened as those storms worked over toward Fort Payne and Crossville. We had 60 mile per hour wind gusts on Sand Mountain. Then as the storm descended the mountain down into the Wills Valley, uh, apparently an EF1 or maybe as high as an EF2 tornado developed there on the north side of Fort Payne, and that's what caused all the damage there. So that's what the radar image looked like at 1215. We were on the air as the tornado was working down the mountain and into the valley. The tornado warning was actually issued once the tornado passed the city of Fort Payne. It's just one of those things that happens with radar. Sometimes you can't see everything. Uh, and in this case, the radar somewhat overshot the actual circulation that was producing the tornado. And that was the reason for the delayed warning. But nonetheless, as it moved over into North Georgia, the warning was canceled about 1245. Sirens continued to go off in parts of DeKalb County. And uh, that's one reason you didn't see coverage after 1245 is because the storm was over to Georgia, even as those sirens continued to sound. Uh, so the worst of the damage came when the storms moved through Crossville and Fort Payne. There was a 60 mile per hour wind gust reported in Crossville and what looks like at least an EF1 or EF2 tornado on the north side of Fort Payne. And as soon as that information is available, we're going to bring that to you uh, here at the newscast on WHNT News 19 or if it's uh, sometime after 7 o'clock, we'll have that information on social media and the blog and update you on it coming up at 10 o'clock tonight.